Hello and welcome to Fox Sports One on One. I'm Molly McGrath. In this interview series, we've spent time talking with some of the most prominent athletes and sports figures. But now we'll go in depth with one of the greatest entertainers around, Bill Murray. While he loves acting and cracking jokes on screen, his interests aren't just limited to his IMDb filmography. Chris Meyer sat down with the comedic icon at his Murray Brothers charity golf event to talk about his love of sports. So we're at the uh, the World Golf Hall of Fame. Right. I feel like we should whisper in here. It's think? a Hall of Fame. Oh. You know, you, you want to shout it from the mountaintops. We made it, you and I made it to the Hall of Fame. Get away. Well, no, there, Bob Hope is, is in here. I don't see your name on any of the... Well, we're not going to wake him up. He's so. sleeping soundly. <laughs> Uh, what do you like about golf? So I think you have kind of a, a, a kind of a poetic romance thing about golf in some way, or do you with all sports? Well, you're so serious, Chris. I mean, I just got here. I know you just drove. I barely got here. I've been yeah. driving all the time. I'm just trying to wet my whistle, and you're saying, what, you, what do you say? Romantic, I love golf. Oh, romance. Yeah, yeah. It's always romance with this guy. No, not really. <laughs> but you, uh, you're getting more philosophical in your later years, I would say. Well, as as the brain empties out, there's less room for. Clutter. Other things. Yeah. Is this clutter? This is it. <laughs> yeah, this, soon this will be clutter. I knew yeah. where you were going with this, <laughs> but you're attracted to golf for what? For what reasons? Economic reasons, Chris. Really? Yes. Well, you I make a lot of money. No, you were a caddy. I was a caddy. That's how I was attracted to golf economically. At what age? <clears throat> well, when I was ten, I was a shag boy. Which you have to explain nowadays because people don't even know what a shag boy you is. The golf. You go get Before the there were driving ranges. The, a guy, a golfer would have a, a bag, like a sort of looking halfway like a bowling bag, bowling ball bag, full of golf balls. And he would have his, he would dump all his golf balls out and hand you the bag and send you out there and you'd say, I gotta start with the nine iron. And you'd go sort of nine iron distance away and you were the target and he would hit balls at you. And then he would step up to, you know, he'd wave and change to a seven or five and, and basically you were the target. And, uh, but, you know, as, you it, as it is, you know, you could sort of drift off because the odds of his hitting it where he intended to, because <laughs> guys that were practicing in those days usually were bad players who desperately wanted to not look so bad. Good players just sort of kept playing a lot. Anyway, in case you drift off and you get hit by a ball. But then you graduate to being a caddy. Yeah, after a while I, got, I became a caddy, first like a singles caddy where you carry one bag and then a doubles caddy. But I golfed, there, I, went, I caddied a place where they, well, I didn't earn a lot of money. You had okay. to work hard, you had to work a lot of hours, you had to try to go twice a day to make any kind of money. And you learned And you things. were learning how to play poker at the same time, so you had these economic reversals during the course of your day. This sounds like a Caddyshack script. Yeah, very much way. so. Right, yeah. we can see. But no, I've heard you talk about how you learned uh, to treat, or not to treat people from some of the golfers who were well off. Is that the right way to phrase that? Well, you were, it wasn't exactly slave labor, but you were definitely, <laughs> you know, the caddy rules are show up, keep up, and shut up. And so you didn't really necessarily initiate conversation, and you could, you could play in, around with almost no conversation. Wow. You know, and there would be almost no conversation, and, which was unusual in life that you spend you know, maybe four hours with someone, they don't really speak to you, you know, so much. And that was a, a lesson of some sort. But you learn a lot about how, and by the way people treat you, mm -hmm. how, you know, as a kid, how you should treat other people. You, you have the, the Murray Brothers uh, Caddyshack Golf event every year in, in Florida, and you raise money for charity, which is a nice thing, and I don't, you guys don't publicize that. But you do enjoy playing golf, watching golf on TV, well, it's, some of them are fun. I mean, Masters is really fun because there's so much drama in the last nine holes of the Masters. How about the U.S. Open? That, too, is also yeah. a lot of drama in, in those final holes because the Open is a, is a very difficult course to play. They make the course very difficult, and as the man said, we're not trying to embarrass the best <laughs> golfers. We're trying to identify them. No, and you're very, you get very serious about your golf while you have fun. Right? Uh -huh. You've played a lot of courses around the world. Right? Right. Can you name some of the most unique or interesting places you played golf? Well, unique. Oh, people always say, like, what's your, the prettiest one? I think Tralee in Ireland is the okay. most beautiful course you can play. And Ireland really is just the greatest place Ireland, to go yeah. for. I mean, I'm, I'm not a citizen there, so it always has a sort of a, something wonderful. My ancestors are all Irish. 
But they, you're treated like a king in Ireland. They yeah. treat you like a king. Okay. The courses are beautiful. They're very devoted to the sport. And the whole country is, is littered with golf courses, wonderful golf courses. How about in the U.S.? Well, Illinois near Chicago has extraordinary golf yeah. courses. Their own caddy roots. And, and it, you wrote a book about golf, I, I remember. I did. Is there, uh, would, you, would you do something else with golf in terms of, remember how you did the NBA promotional thing? That you yeah, that was, a, right? that, that was, was a fun thing, right. And, and um, I don't know, would you, something like golf, would that interest you? or you're, You said this was going to be 10 minutes. So we're, we're already at the 12 minute mark. Ju I just got the waving mark, too. Does that no, mean go you ahead. Like the something about golf? No, I, I just, would like I, to write a book to about, you, yeah. uh, it was fun writing yeah. a book. I turned, it turned out I, I, I could actually write. It took okay. me a while to do it, but by the end of the book, I could actually write. Okay. Uh, I, I would like to write a book, and I've been meaning to, I just haven't gotten around to it. I'd like to write a book about, of stories about things we, d we did at Pebble Beach. Uh, over your years Over there. the years of okay, playing the tournament be, there. Yeah, There's a lot of funny But funny just in a nutshell, happen. when you watch golf on TV, what do you look for in general? Do you pay attention to the, the specifics of the hole? You're just kind of relaxing, wandering. You say, if I was there, I would I would use this club, mm. or I can't hit like that guy. Well, that only gets interesting in close, where you can see the sort of so, distance. Okay. I mean, you know how you like when you watch pro tennis? Like when you watch men play tennis, you don't even see the ball. Right. It's going right. so fast, you don't even know where the heck it is. And it's like that when you see these big hitters, you see them whip it, you know, they, you see them hit the heck out of it. And unless they're tilting one way or another, you don't really have a clear concept of where it's going. Right. And they don't either because they're hitting it farther, farther. than they can see. Right, right, right. And tough to follow on. They you. can't even see where it's going. Yep. They got to, uh, sometimes, you know, especially if it's a dog leg and they're taking it over the trees, right. they're just hitting the heck out of it and they're just hoping it's in the fairway or with a shot of the green. But in close, you can see the kinds of shots they have, the angle and how the pitch and what kind of, you know, bump and running it, what kind of shot that's going to be. But what you really see is you see their body and you see the tension of mm -hmm. it. You actually see how they hold the tension. And it's, a, it's deadly. Yep. <laughs> it's deadly tension. And when you see them kind of, you know, you know, double swallowing or stepping off or spending too long, right. especially, most especially spending too long over a shot, you go, oh, this is deadly. He's right. dead because he can't make himself go. And, you know, you do see people chunk them nowadays. Right. You, you, you see a lot more chunking than you once did because the pressure is, I don't know if it's bigger, I don't know if it's more money yeah. or if it's, because it's all television all the time, but you just see people gag a little bit more. So you, you see that. And especially things like Ryder Cup, where you see yeah. the tension is like, my God, this is my country, country. my nation, my <laughs> world, and I'm going to be despised and, 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 you know, put in front of a firing squad. Coming up on Fox Sports One on One, Bill Murray's athletic exploits go far beyond the golf course. He'll tell us about the summer he spent playing minor league baseball. And he's seen it all. But which sports mecca was the comedian describing when he said this? He put his hands over my eyes and walked me up, and then I opened my eyes when I got to the top step, and it's the most beautiful thing in the world. Welcome back to Fox Sports One on One. Even though fans have seen so much of Bill Murray on the golf course in the movie Caddyshack and in celebrity tournaments, his true sports love is baseball. And as we're about to find out, Murray is just as comfortable swinging a baseball bat as he is a golf club. Uh, late 70s, before you were a big star, right? It, didn't you try to play? You played in a baseball game. I played in two baseball and games. you had a hit, right? These were I have hits. one hit and one strikeout, yeah. And proud of that? Did you think, did you say, heck, I Well, when I, hit the, when I got the hit, I really hit it. I mean, he may have maybe not given 100% to th thinking that someone in the Screen Actors Guild could hit him, or he may have been <laughs> just grooving it for me, but I hit it hard. And I hit it, you know, it was a, it was a real hit. It, would your dream to be, if you were going to, a professional athlete? Oh, baseball, Would you want to be, baseball absolutely. would be it, hands absolutely. down, over a golfer, huh? Over everything. Yeah, okay. Baseball's just, those guys are having much more fun than golfers. Golfers aren't, they're all kind of. They're serious. Mental and they're not having as much fun as we are, <laughs> as you and I are, uh, anyone here. We're having, anyone. this is a laugh a minute here. This is, well, <laughs> things will pick up, don't yeah, worry. It's going to pick up. I, I hope so. But, I but, have a lot of confidence uh, in you. I, <laughs> I don't, but uh, true that the first time you, uh, part of your romance with baseball, seeing Wrigley Field, the way you were brought to the ballpark, the family, it was kind of, you're in there and all of a sudden they open your eyes and you see Wrigley Oh, Field. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my brother Brian did that. He, Brian the, Doyle who wrote Brian Caddyshack. Brian who wrote Caddyshack with Doug Kenny and Harold Williams. Um, 
we went to see the Cubs against the Brooklyn Dodgers. That's how long ago wow. it was. And when we got into the ballpark, and the thing you did where we came from is you took the, you took the L, and you rode in the first car, and it was like, who's going to see the scoreboard first? And it was all kind of this incredible excitement. And then when we got into the ballpark, just as, you know, you come in sort of on a lower level, and you have to walk up these stairs. He, he put his hands over my eyes and walked me up, and then I opened my eyes when I got to the top step, and it's the most beautiful thing yeah, in the world, yeah. I feel. And now being renovated, but the Wrigley part It'll still changed. be the most beautiful. Yeah. I mean, they thought when they put in lights that, oh, they're going to ruin it. And, oh. you know, even with lights, it's still the most still beautiful good. place. Uh, it's beautiful at night, too. Do you have a favorite all-time Cub? There's only one favorite all-time Cub. The late Ernie Banks. Wait, Ernie, and yes, Mr. Be, Cub. Yeah. No, there's a lot of great Cubs, and but he was my guy. And okay. You're, I mean, anyone that was of the time he played used to run home from school to see the right. seventh, eighth, and ninth inning and see if Ernie could hit a home run and tie up the game or something like that. Let's, uh, yeah, let's wait to, uh, well, the Bears, I know you're a Chicago sports fan, mm -hmm. is Jay Cutler, there's a lot of change going on in Chicago there, but Cutler is still there. Is he the, the guy or is, should they move on from him? You know, I, I just think, I don't see the point of not backing these guys. He certainly has more talent. I mean, when you think of what the history of Bear quarterbacks has been, it's been really many years since they've had great throwers I liked uh, uh, Mc, Jim McMahon, obviously, right, and I liked little. the guy whose name uh, I'm going to blanking now. Rex Grossman. Rex Grossman. They all gave him a horrible time. Rex Grossman could throw the ball. Okay. He could throw, and most Bear quarterbacks couldn't throw a lick. And Cutler obviously can throw. You're a. Sports now, they don't like him so much because he's he's a tough nut. You know, yeah. he's just he doesn't give it up to the press, and you know I don't you know that doesn't bother me yeah. I mean I'm I'm I don't care about what his personality is particularly because I don't really have much inner you know, exchange with him but you know he's there to play football and if he plays football well and that that's makes the sort of fans happy up next Bill Murray opens up about his long career in show business and the evolution of his film choices and while he's been making people laugh for decades what upcoming project made the comedian say this and I felt funny like I hadn't felt funny in a long time Welcome back to Fox Sports One on One. When you've been as successful as Bill Murray's been, you have the ability to be able to work on your own terms, whether it be living outside of the glitz and glamour of Hollywood or choosing the roles he wants, Murray's been able to do things his own way. Well, you're, you're kind of a fan favorite, even though you're supposedly not easy. Even to though I'm on the injured reserve so. list, yeah. <laughs> even though I won't be playing for the next few weeks. That's right. Uh, but, but even though you're supposed to be difficult to get a hold of, you don't use an agent. When I just saw you, when you drove up here, you were at the bar reading a script. You were yeah. working. Yeah. So uh, what's, you got a I'm, couple. I'm a worker bee. <laughs> I am. I'm but a you, you bee. do know how to have fun. And uh, through, through life, you've, uh, you've balanced that. A little bit too much to the fun side? Eh? No, no, nowhere near enough too much to the fun side. I'm, the fact that I'm still working means it, haven't, it hasn't gone too much to the fun side. Yeah, how do, you, how do you... The don't... others that are in the ditch are the ones that went to, to the fun side. But no, I still... I, but I've found that having fun when you work is like a very important thing. Okay. So enjoy your work like this should be more fun than we're having, you know? Right. Well, what do you, if this uh, guy keeps wandering over here, you, get, you, you give it a half-lit guy to, a camera, and he just wandering back and forth like that. Aren't you used Crazy. to cameras and, and uh, all that cut? And, you know, cameras, you know, the, I think the secret is to, once you're aware of them, just forget them. That's, all right, so this is a serious question that you will tur twist and turn, but I don't know if that's a secret. Co comedian uh, Bill Murray to actor Bill Murray, there has been a definite transition not that you're not a funny guy now i'm hilarious <laughs> just hilarious but but you're that so serious you're the one that's so serious you're telling me i'm not <laughs> serious and you're, look at the questions yeah. you're coming up i have with. to be a i'm a journalist you're a laugh a minute Chris. conducting an interview here yeah uh, so but there there is but this is your job try to make it more fun, uh, I'll work try out. Some fun. I'll, if i stay at it i might i might, it might <laughs> click at some point uh but but no you you was that a conscious <laughs> effort was it just no. okay not a conscious mm -hmm. effort you'd still be doing comedies if that was the right way you i felt. just do the ones i I like okay. I really just do the ones I like and it's sort of gone that way that people ask me to do things that are straight and I go ah, I can do that right. you know a guy did tell me a funny thing uh, recently um, I don't know if it's funny to you but it this my friend was very amused by it he said uh, you know if you asked someone about uh, 
Bill Murray and Robert De Niro, they'd say, a, a person, a, a young kid, they'd say, oh yeah, that Robert De Niro, he, he's, he's funny. And, and Bill yeah. Murray, he's, 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 a, he's a good actor. That's right, yeah, the Which twist is, of, yeah, right, right, of, of different, speaking ridiculous. of that, you know, like Godfather, Casablanca, Caddyshack, especially among men, some of the most quoted movies, just people mm -hmm. using the phrase whenever, and especially with golf, you right. know, it's in the hole, and right. Cinderella's, you know, how many, you probably, you hear, how many years has it been, and that's still part of the golf parlance, it was something to be proud of, right? I mean, yeah, 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 sure. And <laughs> no, it is, I mean, those are funny lines, and... You know, the people that wrote them were funny people. Doug Kenny, one of the greatest people any of us ever met, you know, a funny guy, one of the founders of the Lampoon, and wrote Caddyshack and Animal House, and just the kindest man to all of us. Do you enjoy, a, I know a good script is a good script, but a comedy more than a serious role? I know Broken Flowers is something, mean, you know, you like that role, it means a lot. Yeah. We saw St. Vincent recently. Right. Of course, we go back to the old days of What About Bob and mm -hmm. Groundhog Day and all that. Well, it's, you know, I'd like to, I wish, I wish someone would, I wish a, a, like a funny script would roll in. And I did a script this year that had a lot of, that there was room for a lot of funny stuff. And I felt funny like I hadn't felt funny in a long time. I got, you know, you write something that's got funny in it and then all of a sudden you go like, you know, when, when you make a movie, you can bring a whole lot more to it. Right, make right. it a lot funnier. And this movie I, I did called Rock the Cosba. Yeah, Morocco, in, right? You went over to Yeah, okay. I did it in Africa. This could be, Really something. Really big. Yeah, to really put you big. on the map. Uh, it's a movie. Can I just ask you about these? These are uh, Forrest Gump. Were you offered that role? Before? You know, someone wanted me to do that Forrest Gump or read the book and some. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know why. I just never got, okay. never got around to it. Okay. Uh, what about uh, Philadelphia role in, in that? I was the one with. Uh, I was led to believe that I was going to get a role in Philadelphia. Okay. You know which one? The Denzel or the. I think I was going to play the Denzel Washington, Washington part, but he cast uh, Denzel Washington so. and. Uh, you know. And you move on. And Rain Man, what about that one? Maybe. I don't, yeah. I think so too, yeah. Would I think it have so been too. the, not the Tom Cruise part, the Dustin Hoffman part? Do you remember that? I don't remember. But see, uh, I, this was my agent, Ovitz. So Ovitz, you know, was well, the, was the maestro. He controlled all these right. things. And right. Ida, how do you stay relevant, by the way? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I tried to ask that with a straight face. That's funny. Because I wanted to let you answer. That's be, funny. I don't, because you are very have, relevant and I have, have been. Yeah, I have no one. No. That is not my uh, intention. Mo. Okay, so my intention. My intention is to, you know, I like the I like doing what I do. I like right. the work that I do, and, you know, as long as people keep asking me to do the work, that's what relevant is to me. Okay. You know, I don't I don't care to have a uh, streets named after me or anything like that. <laughs> or, are you a workout guy? Uh, huh? Well, you, you can see that I'm a workout that's guy. That's why I Come just on, thought I would go. ask that. You, you obviously, I've been lifting. But, you know, success will produce fine meals and restaurants. And um, so, and so it, that makes it more difficult to move at your best like a dancer. So a gut says success. A gut says you got enough money to eat, eat your way <laughs> past what you need. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for your time, as always. And, Is this uh, goodbye? Uh, well, I want to see you out on the golf course. Oh, so it's so now long. you want to wrap? So I, I had a lot more things no, to cover. You said but you, you had 10 minutes, and so, that there was some yeah. very fascinating thing. That you're going to shoot this in some very fascinating way. You've got this seasick sailor over here going dizzy back and forth. <laughs> it's like, great, this is a master and commander he's shooting over here. Coming up next, Chris and Bill get out of the chairs and onto the golf course. And you know when Bill Murray's on the tee box, he'll channel his inner Carl Spackler. The heavy stuff's not going to come down for quite some time. <laughs> I've heard that. And what are we, we going to wager here? I think the loser's got to take the stairs to the top of the tower over there. There's people up there watching. Yeah, well, they'll be waiting for the loser. <laughs> OK. OK. All right. Now, I was told that you take a you take a practice swing and you really hit the ground because it relieves the tension, right? You, you know, so you, you really do that. That's a good practice swing, right? Yeah. OK. And then now we're going to go for real here, right? So you, you take it back. Ah, uh, that's terrible. Well, I think you're practicing really cut into your overall power there, Chris. <laughs> that looks pretty good. It does, doesn't it? That's right on the green. Get up. 
Nice shot, Chris. Oh, I made the green, so that's I'm on. So the pressure's on. on you. These are bigger drops coming, Chris. You can play in the rain. The heavy stuff's not going to come down for quite some time. <laughs> I've heard that. That's what you're going to be on. That's going to be on too, but it's over there a little right. We each have two on, so yeah. this will be the decisive. Wow. Right? What pressure. Nobody's near the hole, though. Tight, tight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh no, Chris. Oh, that's trouble. The See, pressure really got pressure. to me. All right, so you get this on, you win. I hate to win this way. That means I gotta go up there. We might be double or nothing. I'm I think afraid not, Chris. I think it's just right. another one right where the others are. All right, you're on, you win. All right, well, good job. I know it's not, it's not a lot. It doesn't mean much, you're a so. TV guy. Chris Myers, gonna take the stairs. Okay. This is beneath me, I'll let you know that. So I pulled it under pressure. Uh, but you were hitting an eight iron, I was hitting a six, so I just swung easy. Right. Oh, but I'm gonna get out It's and play a poor them. craftsman, Chris, that right. blames his tools. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> what took you so long? We beat the elevator. We took two elevators to get here. Ah, okay. Well, here you. Like you. How's your heart?